What's going on guys? This is James Allen. Today is Saturday, March 30th, 2024. Politics is a hot topic these days. Everybody's talking about it. And I think this is a sign that no matter what camp you belong in, you're not satisfied with Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm willing to bet many of you, if not all of you, would agree with that. No matter if you're a Democrat, uh, Republican, or Libertarian, which which is what I consider myself, I'm more of a Libertarian, you're not satisfied with Washington, D.C. You're not happy with the things Washington is doing. Now, most people believe that the solution to that is to elect a president of their choice or a congressman of their choice. But what if the solution is actually much more unorthodox than this? What do I mean by that? Well, when I was younger, one author that profoundly affected my thinking is a man named Carol Quigley. He wrote a book called uh, Tragedy and Hope, uh, a very big book, about 1,300 pages long, and I've read it all. I've devoured that book in maybe a month. It's really good. And one of the things he talks about in that book is the tragedy, which is the fact that Western civilization is falling, and the hope. And what he considers hope is that if we manage to reorganize ourselves, if we manage to reorganize how we govern ourselves, the Western civilization might not fall into chaos, but actually re-emerge as a leader, as a world leader once again. So that's the hope. Another author that's profoundly affected my thinking is a woman named Jane Jacobs. She's known for a book called The Death and Life of American Cities. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a cold. Uh, she's known for a book called The Death and Life of American Cities, I think is the title. Uh, but she's written many other books. Uh, probably my favorite book from her is called The Economy of Cities. Extremely powerful book. I mean, I've reread that book several times. But before she died, she wrote a piece called Dark Age Ahead. That piece, which I've also read, warns that Western civilization as a whole is falling into our dark age. And what she proposes is a reorganization, a transformation of how we govern ourselves. She said every 200 years or so, there are new forms of governance that emerges. I'm going to say that one more time. She said every 200 years or so, there are new forms of governance that emerges. And she says, unless the West reorganizes its form of governance, transforms it completely, it's going to fall into a dark age. I'm going to leave an affiliate link at the description for those who want to buy those books and also support my channel. Now, what if ICP, what if Internet Computer gives a glimpse to this new form of governance? I really mean that. I'm not trying to hype up ICP and make it into something that it's not. I'm not trying to sell you a dream or create hype to get views. Not at all. I'm very serious. I've done secret people both on Carol Craigley and Jane Jacobs. So, you know, I am an authentic person because I've done episodes on both these authors I speak of. And perhaps, just perhaps, Internet Computer might give us a glimpse of what this new form of governance look like. Let me explain. Have you seen the SNS dashboard? That's right. This SNS dashboard might actually be a glimpse of what modern governance will be in the future. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the top, you will see Internet Computer. And if you click on that, you will see all the open proposals uh, or all the proposals that are open for the Internet Computer to be voted on. And you could click on them and see whether you want to adopt or reject the proposal after you, you read it. So far, so good. So ICP allows its individual stakeholders to vote on how the network evolves. And right below ICP, what do you see? You see other dApps built on top of ICP that you can also make proposals on if you have the tokens of those dApps, right? So you could make proposals on OpenChat or Kinnick or GoldDAO, whatever dApp you like. If you hold the tokens of that dApp, you could see the proposals and vote on these proposals. Well, picture this. What if instead of internet computer, you see the federal government at the top and below the federal government, you see different municipalities such as New York City or Los Angeles or Chicago, right? So the federal government at the very top and below the federal government, there's different cities, different municipalities or state. And you could click on each of them and see the proposals for those municipalities or for the federal government. But who's creating these proposals? Well, Regular citizens, right? You do not need to be a congressman to create a proposal. Regular citizen 
could make a proposal for their local municipality. Let's just say for an example, a, a citizen submit a proposal for a bridge to be built locally where he or she lives. That proposal is going to cost money, just like it costs 10 ICP to make a proposal on the internet computer system, right? Uh, internet computer protocol, not system. So a citizen can make a proposal and put up his own money to make that proposal. Now, when other citizens review that proposal in order to vote, just like you need tokens to vote on the internet computer, you will need dollars to vote in that system. You vote with your money, meaning if you're a citizen and you're reviewing that proposal for the bridge, you don't just vote with your opinion by clicking yes. You vote with your actual dollars. Listen, anyone can have an opinion, but if you truly believe in something, vote by backing it with your dollars. After all, it costs money to build a bridge. And let's just see enough people voted with their money to build that bridge. Funding for that bridge is reach and the bridge is built by the contractor that can do it the most efficiently. Right. So proposals can raise the money required for their infrastructure, whether that be a bridge or a school or a pool, whatever it is. And there we go. Any citizen can make a proposal. And it costs money to make a proposal, just like it costs 10 ICPs to make a proposal on a protocol. And any citizen could review a proposal, but it costs money to vote yes for that proposal because um, uh, these infrastructure decisions cost money. And it's not your opinion that matter. It's your energy that matters. So you vote what you believe in with your dollars. So what do you guys think? Do you think such a system is possible? I think it is. And it's quite beautiful that we're getting a preview of it through the internet computer protocol. So I hope you see I wasn't pitching you a dream. This might actually be the new form of governance we're looking for. So tell me, what do you think, my misfit? Tell me, what do you think? Do you think this is possible? Do you think this might be the way societies govern themselves? Share your thoughts in the comment section. In any case, my misfits, that's all I have for you in this episode. Be sure to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.